What's up guys, your boy Ash here. Um, just want to make a quick video on how to run stems in Logic. I'll also make one in um, explaining how to do it in Ableton as well. I'm seeing a lot of guys just take files and just throw them in a session and press play. Um, and then going down in flames, you know, because they don't know where they're at in the song or, you know, whatever. So I'm importing some stems in right now. Um, this is an original arrangement from my church band here in Houston. Um, this is Let It Rise. Um, so in Logic, once you, you drag them, once you drag them out of your folder into Logic, you'll get um, this prompt right here. Just going to click on Create New Tracks right here. Hit OK and it will load all of that in there just like that the very first thing you need to do is get organized um so you need the bpm for the song first and foremost because if that's not right um nothing else is going to be right so the bpm for this song is 105 so we're gonna come up here and drop down to 105 now we can start creating markers the way to do that is you can either click on G. G would be the the shortcut on your keyboard, or you can just click this right here and click on the plus sign uh, where the playhead is that matches wherever the part of the song is that you're on. All right, so let's play it and see where the intro starts. Intro. All right, so the intro for the song starts on um, measure three right here. So we, we would come right here and hit plus marker, double click it, and we'll change the name to intro. All right, and my verse starts at measure 12. So that's how you do markers. So there's another thing here um, that you sh guys should know. Now, if you now, purchase stems from like Loop Community and Multitracks and stuff like that, then you know about this. Um, these cues, these cues are the, uh, the equivalent to you actually, um, you know, putting markers. Markers are more of a visual thing and your cues are more of an audio thing. So in our ears, we're basically hearing um, what the next part of the song is. So. Verse two, three, four. A lot of people were asking me, what is that? Where you get that from? Is that the click track? Nah, these are um, vocal cues. They basically are, or a guide. That's another way. Um, or another way of putting it. Some stems you're not gonna have cues for. You can actually create your own if you want to. But that's how you do markers. Um, now let's talk about um, routing. So if we pull up the mixer here and logic, shortcut for that is X, or you can just click on this right here. That'll pull up mixer. Now you could just play it as is and just have everything coming out of the same output, which is fine sometimes. But in this case, because we have um, the metronome going and the, which is click and and vocal cues um we're going to want to um separate those so that basically allows me to send different instruments to um specific channels um to front of house or wherever so in this case everything everything music related is going to be on channel two and my click my guide is going to be on channel one so if you have multiple channels, like I have four channels at church, so um, we have a channel for click, we have a channel for music, we have a channel for loops, and we have a channel for um, BGVs. In this case, we only have two channels, so we're just going to do everything music. We're going to do a channel for music, and we're going to do a channel for um, click and cue. Yeah, in this case, click and cue are right next to each other, so this is a really easy way to do it. Um, you, you can just highlight both of them at the same time. Go here where it says stereo out or ST out. You're going to go to output. Oh, first, um, my bad. First, you need to make this mono. So select both of them, go to stereo output, and then you're going to go to mono and then output one. So if we have, let's say we have DI boxes on stage and only have two, 
one of them is going to be specifically for you know click and the other one is going to be for music so i'll put one usually for me it's always going to be click um but however you have it hooked up is how you have it hooked up so, um we do have to make everything um mono output versus stereo all right so once you do that now you're just going to make everything else output to now I don't know if this is going to show up in you guys' headphones or not, but um your right your left one of your sides should be um just click and the other side should be um music. So that's how you basically route. This is just really basic routing. So if you have a interface that has multiple outs and you're in a situation where you have multiple like DI boxes that you can send things to, then definitely I would suggest splitting up your um your tracks. You know, send send your loops to one, send your click to another, send your music to another, and send your background to another. At at the very least, if you have four. Um, if you only have two, then obviously click on one side and click on one, click and cue on one side and music on, on the other. All right. So I'm going to show you, um, one more trick or tip just in case you guys get in the situation where you guys get off of the track. What I'm about to show you is a lot easier to do in Ableton, but it can be done in logic. You just have to do a little bit more and you have to have pretty good timing too. So in the session, what we're going to do is we're going to make a cut here in the percussion track. Just the part where it's just looping, you know. So I think this is about um bars. So yeah, like a four bar loop right here. So we're gonna come here and we're going to get we're gonna take um the scissors tool, we're gonna cut at the beginning of the first four and at the end of the first four all right you can take that you're going to copy it shortcut is is command c and we're going to come all the way down to the end of the session the session is already over we're just going to pick this spot right here right and you're going to hit command v and you're just going to paste it then you're going to come here at the beginning of it and you are going to um click at the top uh where the measure is and just drag um uh, four measures and then let go and you'll see um this loop here now when you're starting your track you need to make sure that this is not on because if it's time to start the song and you press play and that's highlighted you're going to be starting just the loop and you're going to be all the way back here so just make sure that isn't clicked on so let's say for whatever reason now just for, oh yeah um just keep in mind the shortcut for this is C. So if you just hit C on your computer, um, it'll highlight that. So let's say, for example, we're in the song and, you know, the background singer or the leader, sh they get off or they come in too early. And in logic, you can't skip from one part of the song to the other, you know, without knowing exactly where you are and, you know, having to stop the track and then you know go there it's just too much work so the easiest way i found to do that is to use this um panic solution i guess so let's say we're in the vamp yeah let's say we're in the vamp and the, everybody gets off of the track or whatever and you just need loop right so the way you would do that is you're gonna have to stop the track you, you there's no way around that you're going to have to but just so everything doesn't drop out you're going to basically trigger that percussion loop we have. So let's say we're going to press play, right? Let's say for whatever reason we get off, right? Stop right here. C. And we're still on. And you would just let that ride until the song is over. Your stems, all your stems are going to drop out, but at least you still have the loop going 
another way another way to accomplish another way to accomplish kind of the same thing is to mute everything and just have um just have the loop going so let's say if we're in a song and something drastic happens and everybody gets off as long as you are clicked on to that track where your percussion or your loop is you can do this um so let's say we're going and like i said before somebody gets off right you're just gonna hit s right here and it'll just be your percussion loop shortcut for that also is s on your keyboard so if you ever get in a situation where you just you have to go back to just your loop um you can do that like i said before it's going to be a whole lot easier to do it in ableton and in that video i will show you how to do that as well um so i hope these little simple tips help you guys um let me know in the comments if you guys want me to do any more videos like this don't, don't forget to like share and subscribe and talk to you guys later